No intro, let's go. Today, I am harvesting these huge Indian broadleaf mustard greens. One of my favorite greens I've been growing for two to three seasons. I'm going to take you through the process of planting the seeds to harvesting your mustard greens. So let's go. So this video is divided into six sections. We'll start with a quick background and then we'll go over cultivation with a focus on sowing, fertilizing, water needs, of your mustard greens. Then we'll talk about how to harvest, how to store your harvest, and then we'll talk about some of the common problems you'll find in your garden. And then we'll wrap it up with some nice to knows about the India, Florida broadleaf mustard green. Some quick background on the mustard greens. Now these mustard greens, the Indian broadleaf mustard green, and it goes by several different names but in this case I'll just call it the Indian mustard green this green it has a peppery kind of a spicy taste to it which adds um, some interest to your meals and it is a tender alternative to your regular mustard greens like your heartier mustard greens like your um, your turnip greens your um, collard greens uh, kales a lot of your sturdy um, brassica this is actually pretty it's pretty tender. The mustard green is also a member of the brassica family. So that's going to be your broccoli, your cauliflowers, your uh, collard greens, your kale, uh, turnips, lettuces, um, your leafy greens like that. So they're all cousins and we're going to have fun playing with our cousin today. So definitely if you're thinking of growing a green, this is a really versatile green to have in your garden. You get a lot of bang for your buck. Speaking of which, let's talk about how to get these greens by getting the seeds in the ground. So this is the first week of March and you can see that my greens are very mature and ready to be harvested. Now, typically you would want to plant your greens um, between um, October, even September actually, between September and February. It is a cool season crop and it is a fast grower. This typically grows in about 45 days. Let's look at the seed packet. Yes, harvest in 45, to 50 days. And for those of you who are, who are interested in buying the seeds, this is what the packet looks like from your basic big box store, okay? That's what it looks like. So I'm 45 to 50 days. So if you live in a climate that doesn't get super duper hot, even though this is the fir first week of March, you can still plant these. And you can plant them and harvest them two ways. One, as a microgreen, if you don't have enough time for the full harvest, you can definitely um, get them as microgreens and I'll show you what they look like because I have some hidden down there. Also, if you want to collect the seeds, when the when mustard greens go to seed, when they flower, you harvest the seeds, those seeds are then used to make mustard, your condiment. So you can get two, you know, a bang for your buck. You can get the plant and then you can get a condiment. Now, if you do have, um, real winters because I am in zone 10b in Southern California so we get very mild winters but if you do get um, if you do have winters that aren't too bad you get a, like a little frost the coldness intensifies the sweetness of your greens and that's for all your brassicas um, they love a nice cold frost but not too too cold otherwise it'll kill off your um, your plant but just something like maybe in the 30s um, maybe a little lower i'm not sure but a nice light frost intensifies the flavor of the greens okay light frost mustards love full sun but you can grow them in partial shade they will tolerate that you might not have as big of a plant but you'll have you'll still have harvest and speaking of how big of a plant um, mustard greens can grow to 16 to 22 inches so they get pretty big and I'll break off let me break off a leaf so you can see so this is what the size the size of my face I mean I can literally make some project runaway outfit out of this okay so now I'm going to show you how to sew your um, your broadleaf mustard seed now this is how I do it there oh look all my peas are coming up Okay, let me focus. So 
I'm going to direct sow the seeds and I broadcast. And broadcast just means you just take your hand or container and you just, boop, 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 you just throw the seeds and <laughs> that everything's gonna be okay. Well, let me take you over to a little spot that I really can't afford to plant the seeds, but I really want you guys to see what it looks like. Uh, I'm gonna throw the seeds in there and then somehow figure out how to get the seeds out because I wanna show you how to plant the seeds. So come with me. We are about to sow, broadcast sow, are mustard india florida florida the seeds are pretty tiny and i'm just gonna show you okay y'all i must love y'all because this spot is for my peppers and i have nowhere else wait a minute where else can i sow these seeds we're gonna pretend <laughs> okay so these are the seeds these are your mustard seeds they're very tiny you see that very tiny so when you broadcast them which is what i'm going to do you really want to be careful okay you don't want them going all over the place or having a wind catch some of the seeds and you know next thing you know you have you know grains all around the side of your house so let me show you how we're going to do this now when you're planting your seeds you want to think about your soil um, mustard greens they like loose soil okay and what i use I use a mixture of compost and Kellogg's um, raised bed soil. You can use a mix of ver vermiculite, perlite, and compost, whatever you choose. If your soil is in poor condition and that's all you have, work with that. But get the seeds in the ground. So I'm just gonna just loosen this up a bit, the top soil. Just gonna loosen it up, okay? Now, this bed is for my peppers, but I just wanna show you what's going on and then as the sprouts come up, I'll just give them to some of my friends or two of my friends who are into gardening. But I do want you to see what it looks like. So we have our seeds right here. You see how tiny they are, okay? And all you're going to do is broadcast. Now, since these seeds are really tiny, I broadcast with like a pinched finger, just like this. Doo -doo 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 Let's see, did you see that? Was my arm in the way? Let me do this. Look, hold on. Here are the seeds. Here are the seeds. And then just drop back and forth, back and forth. That's it. That's all it takes. Now, you wanna bury the seeds shallow, okay? So all I'm going to do Maybe grab a little handful of soil next door to your um, to your seeds and just sprinkle on top. Or you can just rake it lightly with your hands. Doesn't matter, either way, I've done both. Just rake it lightly and it'll be in the ground. Now, if you wanna be more structured than just broadcasting the seeds, you can just punch holes 12 to 18 inches apart. Just grab a stick. This is a, a, a garden stick. You can use a pencil, marker, it doesn't matter. Um, your finger and just every 12 to 18 inches, right? Get that hole in there. And then drop maybe two seeds in each hole. Boop, 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 pretend. And then cover. And there you go. And then uh, after you've planted your seeds, whether you, you do a broadcast, or you do more organized, more structured planting. Between four to seven days, basically a week, you should have some seedlings starting to emerge. And once you have your seedlings emerge, then you can start fertilizing it. I wait like three, three, about three weeks after I planted them, and then I'll start to fertilize them. And I use a fish emulsion fertilizer, it's 511. I'll show you a picture of that here. Um, if you're going to use liquid fertilizers, um, you wanna reapply about every three weeks. If you're going to use a granular fertilizer, like bone meal or even a powder, you can fertilize every two to three weeks. So it's a little bit faster. Greens love nitrogen, okay? They really require a lot of nitrogen because they're like all leaves, right? 
all leaves. So because it really loves nitrogen, if you wanna use compost, I recommend using coffee grounds. They are high in nitrogen, and that will help get that nutrient in the ground, help to establish the root system and get those leaves nice, big, and fluffy. And, um, an all-purpose fertilizer, a bone meal, a fish emulsion, or some compost, um, just give your plant some food and um, your greens will be fine. Once you plant it, you want to water regularly. Now, depending on your climate and the time of year, if you don't get a lot of rain in your area, supplement one to two inches. If you do get a lot of rain, just water as needed. Okay, so you have your seeds in the ground, you fertilize it, you watered it, you got sprouts, everything's coming up nicely. Um, after a while, you're gonna be ready to harvest. Now, mustard greens, they're fast growers. So 45 to 50 days, you know, what is that? That's a month and two weeks. So like six weeks. So you'll have greens ready to go. Now, if you want them smaller, like micro, micro greens, you can get them in less time. Let me show you what that looks like. Now, the smaller, younger leaves, if you're going to harvest them before their maturity date, the younger leaves are tender. Let me take you closer, come. That's what it looks like. These are your little microgreens, and you have a little bit of soil. You might have a pill bug in there, but nothing in here. That's soil. Right. That's easy to wash out in the sink. Okay. Anything that can easily fit in your salad bowl. Now, where's that one I grabbed? I'll just grab another one. Now, unless you. Uh, are a giant, this probably is not gonna fit in your salad bowl. But a basic salad bowl, this will fit. That's how you know you have like a micro green or a salad green ready to go. Uh, for the pot, for the bowl, okay? Just an FYI. Now, let's harvest the greens. And also just remember, you can just cut what you need. The leaves will come back. It's a cut and grow um, plant, guys. So this is really wonderful. So. Um, if you're going to harvest just the leaves, just you don't even need a knife. They're so tender. They're so agreeable and compliant. If you're going to just harvest the leaves, start with the outer leaves because those are the oldest leaves. And look, I barely twisted that one. And you'll just grab it at the base, pull down, twist. Boom. Okay. Now, what about the smaller ones? Same thing. Pull down. You heard that crack? Twist. There you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest um, maybe about half of the, um, the plot, this little area here, uh, just because it's a lot of leaves and um, I have to store it. And I'll talk about that next, how to store your leaves. So here's a snapshot of the back of the mustard green seed packet. Um, I left some things out. So here is your cheat sheet for germination, the depth, the spacing, all of that good information. Okay, we have our harvest. It's a lot of mustard leaves, a lot of mustard green leaves. So I have a lot of work cut out. Uh, for me tonight because I'm going to wash them um, and then prepare them some for storage and then some to um, to eat but that's it it's really easy just I just use my hands and the only thing you have to worry about is your back from bending over <laughs> now once you have your lovely harvest of greens what are you going to do with them well they're about you have about four options one option number one if you're going to eat your greens within the week um, you're simply just going to wash them prep them and then cook them however you're you know you cook them and they're ready to go um, you typically want to eat them within a week because that's their peak um, tasting period that's their optimal um, freshness so you want to eat them within a week or so of harvesting okay now you picked a lot and you can't eat a lot or you just want to have some on hand for another time your second option is to um, freeze them and, and you would do this by cleaning and blanching them which um, maintains the color of your greens and stops the cooking process that's blanching you'll blanch them and then you'll put them in the freezer that way you can preserve your greens use them whatever you want to uh, and then the third way is to dehydrate 
um, your grains. Now, I personally have not done that. I'm still waiting to get a dehydrator. I might try it. But I do know people who have dehydrated their grains. And so you would just follow um, the instructions on your dehydrator. But you can dehydrate grains. You can dehydrate anything. So that's another way to preserve your grains. The fourth way of preserving your grains, your harvest, is to can. Lift the lid away from your face, all right? Or you're gonna have a really, really bad day. Let's talk about common problems growing mustard grains. They're really um, disease resistant and pest resistant. Now, with that said, you might find an occasional aphid. Like I didn't have any aphids on my mustard grains, but they do happen. The most I find on my grains, um, maybe some leaf miners. Oh, I think I saw this on like three leaves and I harvest it like so many. So you'll see. Um, bird droppings because um, I had beans next to my greens and so the birds just like to hang out there. So that's it. So that's the most of the damage, which is really nothing, but if you do find that you have an infestation of aphids, whether white or green, you can definitely use um, some, some organic uh, remedies like neem oil. That's what I use. Actually, that's the only thing that I use. Neem oil, I have it in a spray bottle uh, mixed with water and I spray it on the backs of the leaves. You can also take dish detergent and mix it with, um, you can mix it with a number of things. Some people just use dish detergent and just spray the leaves um, off or just take um, your hose, put it, um, the, put the nozzle on jet and then use that to um, knock the aphids off. Now they will come back, but you have a big infestation that can help give you uh, some help in the battle <laughs> against the aphids, caterpillars. So if you see white moths, they're not butterflies, but if you see white moths flying about, um, they're looking to lay eggs <laughs> on your leaves. And um, so you don't want that. So if you have some parasitic um, wasp around, they will prey on um, those pests. And um, if you seem to have a lot of caterpillars, then I would get some netting, which, I would get some netting, maybe something smaller, like hole wise. This is a large netting for birds, but for deterring the white moth, which produces those caterpillars, at least over here, you can put netting, but like the fruit, like the berries netting where the hole, the little square is smaller than this, okay? Now diseases. Now um, you can run the risk of getting powdery mildew, but you, as you saw, my plants were packed together and I had not a lick of powdery mildew. Just be mindful that could happen. But again, mustard grains, they're like your favorite child. They always listen. They don't have to be told twice. You know, they do things without being asked and really just low maintenance. That's the child you can depend on that's going to help you when you are old. Last section, y'all. Let's talk about the nice to knows. Now remember when you have when you cook greens, they do cook down tremendously. So what you think is one big leaf, um, once it's cooked, it might look like this on your plate, but cooked. So just keep in mind that um, you might it might it looks like you have a lot, but they do cook down. If you're using them raw, no problem. Which brings me to my next point. Once I gave my mustard greens an edge up. I took it to the barber shop to shape the edges and everything. Now that I open up more space, more sun can come through. My companion plants can flourish. Now, if you're going to plant mustard grains, remember the leaves are huge and floppy. So whatever you plant next to it, you either want to grow vertically like beans, corn, peas, things like that, or another kind of um, leafy, um, vegetable like here I have kale okay and so it's, it's starting to grow but it was getting some shade from the mustard grain so 
just be mindful of what you plant next to it. Now, as far as companion um, planting, there are some ideal plants to plant next to your mustard greens to help bring in beneficial insects and then repel those pests. So take a look at that. You can grow your greens in containers, um, any kind of containers, you know, the fabric containers, your hard shell containers, doesn't matter. They also um, grow in the ground. So I would probably maybe direct sow like well, depending on the size of the pot say if it's a five gallon pot even a one gallon pot um, maybe two or three four seeds um, you could do more you, which is called high density planting and what that means is that you have a whole bunch of plants together and the strongest survives okay and those who can't make the cut don't make the cut or they just become little microgreens and then the big boys or big girls grow and then you you have a uh, an option of harvesting the more mature um, plants or the microgreens, which is actually pretty good because you have choices. So my question is, have you grown mustard greens before? And if you have, what variety or varieties did you grow? Um, let us know down in the comment section below and maybe you can help a fellow gardener discover a new plant to put in their garden. All right, this is Nikki with The Messy Homesteader. Thank you so much for spending time with me. If you found value in this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I really appreciate it and it helps in these YouTube algorithm streets. So I will see you on the next share. Bye.